Hello viewers, welcome to our first episode of Economy Trend Pointer. Here we'll be discussing on the Kenyan economy and how it trends. Our panelists will be Professor Peter Ndege, a professor of history in the Department of History, Political Science and Public Administration, Mo University. Dr. Patrick Saisi, HOD, the Department of Economics, Mo University. Mr. Richard Siele, a lecturer of economics, Mo University. Our topic today will be external debt. And speaking of external debt, Mr. Richard Siele, where do we stand as a country as far as foreign debt is concerned? I think what I must say is that um, as we, as of 2015, that is at that June, our external debt stood at 1.4 billion. That is uh, 1.4 trillion, that is to correct that. And uh, the domestic debt was actually the same, 1.42 trillion. And um, to put it in more detail, if we had, because we are f focusing on the external debt, the, the way we have been paying our debt has really been increasing in, with figures as we go along. If I may take you just from 2010, what we paid was, uh, in terms of interest alone, was only 6 billion Kenya shillings. And uh, that's 2011, we had uh, 5.7 billion. In 2013, 20, 20, 2012, we had 7.7 .7 billion. 2013, we had 11 billion. And come to 2014, was uh, 13 billion. Now, what is worrying now is that 2015, we actually paid an interest of 29 billion Kenya shillings. To me and to as an economy, that was too much or too actually very high. But if you compare also what we actually, the increase in the debt, that is uh, from that 2010, there's been increasing gradually. From 2010, we had actually 10 billion, an increment. On 2011, we had actually 29 billion. In uh, 2012, we had 99 billion, an increment. We had uh, 20, we had 60 billion, 2013. 2014 is now when there was an increase, even a double, 106 billion. 2015, which is just the other year, is 20, is 217 billion, a whooping man, amount of money. Now we never know where we will be at the end of this financial year, 2016, because as you see, the trend is actually increasing with time. And more so, 2013, it, there was a, a high or actually an increment of the figure from, one, from 60 to 106, and then to 217. We never know what we'll be. Considering we have the euro bond, it will increase that amount. Considering we have the standard gauge railway, it will increase that amount. So the, 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 the year 2016 will be more than this figure. Thank you, Michael. Speaking of... 29.3 billion is a lot, gentlemen. Isn't that mortgaging our country? What do you think about that? Yeah, I think uh, based on the analysis that uh, Mr. Siela has given us, the trend is worrying because every year we go, our external debt is increasing mm -hmm. and the burden of paying becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. And that is why we are worried that we are mortgaging our country and our children are going to pay uh, for almost not less than 40 years. And therefore, we need to think about it. Yeah, I think I want to build on uh, the arguments of my colleagues here. The statistics, the statistics that Mr. Siel has given us is worrying. It demonstrates the incremental nature of our foreign debts. And uh, it would simply mean that as we borrow, because we can't repay, we borrow to pay, and we borrow to pay, which means that we find ourselves and our country in a situation of perpetual dependency, which is really bad for a, a, a developing country like Kenya. And uh, Dr. Saizi, speaking of the foreign debts we have in Kenya, most of these debts have been borrowed externally. Kenya has borrowed its debts externally rather than locally. Why so? Um, is there any influence? Is there any political influence or such kind of influence? Yeah, uh, I think from the economic point of view, it is good to borrow from outside uh, the country because if the country, if you borrow domestically, it means you are going to be 
chasing the same money that uh, a common investor wants to do that. And if you do that, the interest rate will go up and therefore investors will not be able to borrow locally. So the loan will be expensive for investors and therefore we may have unemployment and all that kind of thing. Borrowing internationally is good because it cushions our dollar, our shilling. Because when we get dollars coming to our country, uh, it stabilizes our shilling. And when it does that, uh, it will be easier for our shilling to be able to be strong to, uh, compared to other international currencies. I think that is uh, very, very important on that. Uh, I want to say that uh, the choice whether to borrow externally or domestically will also depend on other, other factors. Uh, as, as Dr. Saisi said, a country such as ours will try to compare what are the rates of interest borrowing externally and what, are, what would be the interest rates borrowing internally. Now, if for some reason the, ex the, 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 the interest rates for borrowing externally is higher than borrowing internally, then it would be prudent for a country to borrow internally. And uh, what does that mean? What would it be that lowers uh, interest rates domestically? You remember during the Kibaki regime, uh, the Kibaki regime opted to borrow internally. And what had happened to our economy during the years of the Kibaki regime, the first phase, was that uh, our economy realized very rapid growth, which translated in lowering the interest a bit, and so our government opted uh, to borrow internally. And the importance of that again is, you see, for reasons of economic nationalism, it makes sense to borrow internally so that we decrease, we minimize the extent to which we depend on external sources. So it's, it's a matter of also considering other factors, but I agree with what Dr. Says has said as well. It is good also to say, as I, I agree with the prof, that uh, it's good to borrow internally, because when there are issues that external people are opposing you to do, you can withstand that, because you can say, I can do that. But the other issue of borrowing internally, as I have said, if it raises the interest rates, the interest rate will impact the prices of things. It becomes a political quagmire. So that's why sometimes you see it is easier to go and borrow outside so that you don't raise the interest rates and then it will, that will impact the prices of things that the investors are going to produce. And then people will start making noise and then it will be very difficult for you to govern. Professor Ndege, what is the impact of foreign debt to a Kenyan economy? Ideally, no country uh, thrives without foreign debts, but the impact of foreign debts on developing countries is a bit uh, negative. As I've said before, we see the incremental nature of foreign debts. It would appear that uh, Foreign debts simply lead to more debts as we borrow to pay. Now, you can see that that brings us into a very sad situation of perpetual de dependency. But more specifically, foreign debts lead to more deficits in Kenya's balance of payments because from our uh, domestic product, we spend a lot of money repaying foreign debts because of the deficits we have in the balance of payments. Now what does that mean? Taking a large proportion from our balance of payments to pay foreign debts. It means that we are starving mm -hmm. the economy of investable surplus because the monies we pay foreign debts with would have been recouped and reinvested internally. Mm -hmm. Now if we use it to pay debts it would mean that we are uh, starved of funds, and that is why we have to borrow. That is why we have to even, uh, we, that's why we have to, you know, factor in borrowed money in our budgets. Imagine that, 
we have to factor in borrowed money in our budgets and it takes a very substantive uh, very substantive proportion now the negative effect then would be on budgeting revenue loss and what does that mean that means that because now there is less money circulating there is less money circulating within the economy uh, government may be forced to increase taxes taxes uh, of whatever form now when taxes are increased it has an impact on uh, domestic consumption domestic incomes domestic incomes are reduced now when incomes of peoples are reduced savings go down and when savings go down investments also go down that is as far as uh, people within the country uh, the experiences are concerned but on the other hand if government tries to again increase taxes to pay debts this will also affect foreign investors because one way we try to give them incentives is you know, they would want to operate where taxes are low. Now, if we increase taxes, this will lead to capital flight because they'll say, uh -uh, it's very expensive to invest in Kenya. Yeah. And so we'll have a vicious circle. Mm -hmm. The point we're making here is foreign debts lead to a vicious circle. Mm -hmm. It leads to you know, distortions of the economy. It leads to, you know, it decreases in incomes of people. It leads to, it may lead to capital flight, and 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 and, and the, 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 the the circle is is perpetually vicious. Now, what does the government do when there is an economic meltdown? When it has too much debt, what it does, and what it could do, is retrenchment. Imagine, like now, I think Kenya is planning to retrench about 40,000 40, workers. Now you can imagine what impact that will have on 40,000 families because these are the breadwinners of these families. So much as foreign debts have been known to be a, a, a panacea for economic woes, but I think it has to be resorted to with a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of deep thought so that it does not uh, worsen the situation. Used diligently, used diligently, and uh, my economics colleagues here will chip in, uh, no country will avoid foreign debts. I think what Professor said is totally true, and um, the increment of the taxes, the raising of the taxes, have a negative impact on the private investment. However, uh, I, I want to bring the point uh, of there is also goodness and positive effects of uh, of foreign debt, if and only if that money is utilized as it is supposed to be utilized. For example, if money comes in to the country and used for investment, generating more income and more, it will actually create more jobs, it will create more income for the consumer, for the Wanaiji, and that way we'll be able to increase the, actually the, I call it the incomes for the people. So there is a positive effect if and only if that money which has been borrowed is actually utilized in the country, in the economy, well. Thank you. Uh, and doctor, please. money has been a key tool to development. Is there any model that does not prioritize money as a key tool to development? All models are, uh, in economics are talking about money. It is only how that money is received. For example, you may get Keynesian theory, uh, not talking about uh, the government expanding its activities so that they can get more money to feed the people. And then there is another model that says, no, the government should play less uh, into the economy and the private sector plays more. So in all this, you find that uh, money is the key to everything. And uh, I don't think... And that's why we have budgets. There is no model that you will say you, you don't have a budget and you think development will come. So that is how, uh, in short, I can say, I don't think there is any. If there is, I'll be very glad to hear. But everything is about money and how that money is going to be utilized uh, to, to, to develop the country.
we are taking a short break, don't go too far.